Hello, good morning, and thank you for joining us for today's University of Alabama Media Day in advance of the 2021 College Football Playoff National Championship. Starting today's event is Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith. If you would like to ask a question during today's press conference, please use the raise hand function on your screen. When you are called upon, your line will be unmuted so that you can ask your question. We are also transcribing and recording today's call. We will post the transcript and a copy of the video at collegepressbox.com shortly after the conclusion of the video conference. At this point in time, we will begin the question and answer session. First question today will come from Michael Casagrande. Michael? Yeah, Devontae, just wonder what was the emotion like last night? Was it the anxiety uh, watching that ceremony? Um, last night, it was um, a great feeling, and um, it was just a blessing just to be in that situation, to be with Mac and Coach Saban here last night. But um, now that's in the past, and now it's on to Ohio State. Next up, we'll hear from Jeff Spiegel. Jeff? Yeah, Devontae, I was just curious as to, uh, I mean, you're, you're such a focused individual moving on to the next thing, but, uh, you know, the excitement of last night, did you did you have trouble sleeping? Was it a good night's sleep for you, or, or were you able just to kind of, you know, put that to bed, so to speak, and move on? Uh, I went home and went straight to sleep. All right. Next to Charlie Potter. Hey, Devontae, I, I know it, it remains to be seen if he's going to play or not, but just how good is it to see Jalen Waddle back at practice and, and back on his feet? Um, it's, it's amazing just to see him recover. Um, I'm glad that he's recovering well and um, that everything is just going as planned. Next we'll hear from Zachary Braziller. Um, Devonta, how how did Jalen? How is Jalen looked? Did you know at practice? I mean, does he look like himself? Um, I I think he's getting back into it. Um, of course, it's going to take some time just for him to get back comfortable with everything. But he looks good to me. I mean, what do you think? Do you think there's a shot of him playing? No comment. <laughs> Next, we'll hear from Nathan Baird. Nathan? Devontae, just curious if you had a chance to look at Ohio State's defense more and just um, what are your thoughts on what you saw from their defensive backs, maybe especially how they matched up with Clemson? Um, as a defense, they're, they're a very good defense. Everybody um, gets to the ball. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They're back in. They're very athletic. They're great cover guys. Next, we'll hear from Steve Mouton. Steve? Devontae, again, congratulations uh, with the award last night. But uh, moving forward like you'd like to, is this maybe uh, the, the best defense, at least film study-wise, that you've seen this year at Ohio State? Uh, yes, it's, it's one of them. Just with everything that they do, giving us different looks and things like that. Um, everybody getting to the ball, everybody just doing their job. Next, we'll hear from Angel Wells. Angel? Angel, you need to unmute. Devontae, both you and Ohio State cornerback Sean Wade are future first-round draft picks. How much do you look forward to your one-on-one -on -one matchup with him, and what will you do to make it tough for him to stop you? Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Just um, my last game. I'm only guaranteed this last one. So um, I'm looking forward to getting to play against him. Next we'll hear from Brian Davis. Brian. Hey, Devontae, you know, in this world of college football where, you know, everybody wants the ball and everybody wants to play this season, how did coach Saban and, and, and Sark make it work? How did you guys spread the ball around where everybody gets enough touches and everyone's happy? Um, I think that's just 
part like part of this team, just everybody knowing that it's going to be some games where you're going to get all, all the touches and some games you're not going to. And I think that's just everybody just buying into the process and just believing in the coaches and everything that they do, that they're going to put everybody in a great situation to do the right thing. Next winner from Bill Bender. Bill? Devontae, you had uh, Coach Saban there with you last night, and I was just wondering, I mean, you know, he's obviously known for his work with defenses, defensive backs, but what's the biggest impact you think Nick Saban's made on you as not only a player but maybe off the field as well? Um, just a lot of life lessons, just things outside of football, what is how you treat people, and no matter how people are treating you, you always treat everyone else with respect. Next, we'll hear from Tony Gerdeman. Tony? Devontae, what have you seen from Sean Wade uh, in film work so far? And uh, I guess, why is it you're looking forward to uh, work? Um, he's very crafty. He um, mixes his technique up some. And just everything he does, he's um, a technician with everything he does. And he's a great player. Uh, next, we'll hear from Dave Naylor. Dave? Devontae, um, could, could you share with us your perspective on the development of, of your teammate John Mechie this year from, from freshman season to, to the way he's been able to contribute as a sophomore? Um, just from day one when Mechie came in, when he was a freshman, he was always in the film room watching extra film, trying to learn defenses and things like that. So he's put in the work. Um, it's paying off for him just with everything that goes on. And he's been great to this team and great to this offense. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from AP Stedham. AP. Uh, good morning, Devante. Uh, Devante, when you're watching the film of Ohio State or other teams you're competing against, do you look for how they guard the number one receiver, maybe some double? coverage or special zones and do you also do you know anybody on the Ohio State team fairly well um I think every team has coverages where it's um going to be doubles in it so I mean that's just part of playing defense you have those coverages where you are allowed to do that and um I don't I don't know anyone on Ohio State's team thank you next Jacoby Cole Jacoby Devontae, how did you prepare for the upcoming season? Can you say it again? How did you prepare for the upcoming season? I can't understand. How did you prepare for the upcoming season? I said, how did you prepare for the upcoming season? Um, just coming in day in and day out, just doing my job, just doing the things that the coaches wanted me to do and just putting in extra work. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from John Zener. John? Uh, yeah, Devontae, you probably had quite a few battles in practice with Patrick um, over the years. I'm wondering what makes him so good, and have you ever faced anybody better in a game? Um, what makes Pat so good is just how technical he is with everything, what is getting his foot in the ground and things like that. He does everything just right, and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He's very smart. He can read offenses. He reads the splits and things like that. He's a great corner. And our last question today for Devontae will come from Lucas Weiss. Lucas? Hey, Devontae, thanks for taking the time. I'm just uh, building off of Dave's previous question on, on John Metchie the third. Can you elaborate? on how John has grown as a person off the field? Um, I believe he just got more comfortable with being around here, just not necessarily from being around this area. He's got a lot more comfortable with, with things around here, and it's just made him develop more and become a better player. Thank you, Devontae. We look forward to seeing you in Miami. Thank you. Hey, Alex, just 
Talk about Ohio State's front seven. What type of problems they might cause for your offensive line after watching that Clemson game? Um, their front seven, just like most good teams, uh, they're strong, physical. They're stout in the interior, and they got really good edge rushers on the edge. Um, and their linebackers are super athletic, can go sideline to sideline. They can hit you downhill. They're uh, a good group. Next, we'll hear from Tony. I'm going to mess this up, Tony, so I'll just go with Tony. <laughs> yeah, Alex, uh, you mentioned before the Notre Dame game that you guys wanted to prove yourself as the best offensive line. Well, you won the Joe Moore Award. Just what does that mean to you guys as a unit? That means the, um, I mean, it means the world to us, you know, because that's one of our goals as a group that we've always had, like going into uh, every season, I know for me here um, at Alabama, and um, it's just a testament to the work we put in to get it, you know what I mean? Um, and just how hard we worked for it, and we're um, extremely grateful. Next is Brendan Gullick. Brendan? Hi, Alex. Congratulations on getting in the national championship game. I know you were asked a little bit about Ohio State's front seven, but specifically their linebackers. Uh, it, it's a pretty veteran group, and they seem like they're, you know, both able to rush the passer, but but also play well in coverage. What are the challenges of playing against a, a group of veteran linebackers that maybe are hard to to deceive? Um, I mean, it's going to be challenging because, uh, just like you said, they're seniors. They're like smart. They played a lot of football. You know what I mean? So. Uh, they know what they're doing, and um, they're great at what they do. So um, it's not going to be a lot of uh, like trick them, you know, and stuff like that. We gotta, um, we just gotta. Uh, I mean, play football. You know what I, I mean? Like, I don't really know how to explain it. We just gotta like attack them directly. You know what I mean? Because they are smart and they are good. So it's just gonna be like mano y mano. Next is Patrick Murphy. Alex, similarly to, to these questions about Ohio State's defense, but just when you get in a matchup like this where you know it's going to be good on good at this level, how much is the excitement level ramped up for, for this offensive line for that challenge? It goes way through the roof, you know what I mean? Um, like, not saying uh, we aren't excited for any game or any opponent we're playing, but um, – we're just uh, competitors, you know what I mean? So um, we love to compete, and um, we're going to step up to the challenge, and we're going to see if they want to play football. Next is Charlie Potter. Charlie? Hey, Alex. I know you've talked a lot about your decision to come back this season. Just how cool is it to, to be able to end this season back in your home state of Florida playing for a national championship? Um, I mean, it's great, me being a – Floridian, to be honest, I love Florida. I think it's the best state ever. And uh, I'm uh, extremely grateful and happy for the opportunity to play in the national championship, of course. But it also being at home in the crib, it's, it's a great feeling. And I'm super excited for it. Next is Joseph Goodman. Joseph? Thanks for taking the time. Um, I got two quick questions for you. Uh, Sark was bragging on the leadership of the team um, earlier, and uh, what makes the leadership of this team so good, in your opinion? Um, I think it's so good because, um, like, the leaders of this team, they, they, um, they like do what they preach. You know what I mean? It's not just a bunch of guys just you know saying one thing and doing another it's a like a collective group of leaders that actually um believe in what we're saying you know what i mean and actually have like and actually want to accomplish the goals that we're saying and stuff like that and um we just try to like positively affect as many people as we can around us to like get us all on the same page you know what i mean so i feel like that's the most effective effective part of it Next, we'll hear from Ron Horschick. I'm sorry. 
Alex, what did you think of Najee hurdling the, the Notre Dame guy? And was that especially exhilarating for the for the huddle for the offensive players? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, it always is. But uh, to be honest, I wasn't surprised. I mean, he's done it so many times over his career here. I mean, he's going to do what he does. Steve, no time. Hey, Alex, hope you're doing well today. Uh, a lot was made about the heading into that semifinal game without Landon Dickerson and uh, Chris Owen taking his place. Tell me about that experience uh, for your group collectively along the offensive line without Landon in the semifinal. Um, that experience was fun um, because, um, I mean, we all had like all the belief that Chris would get the job done. And we feel like he did. And although Landon, he wasn't there playing, he was still he still played like a huge part in the leadership of the O line. You know what I mean? Like being on the sidelines, just being uh, communicating with us and telling us things he saw and things that we could do better and stuff like that. So um, it was like he was still there to be honest, because the job was still executed, and we still had his presence as a leader there for us. So it was it was fun. Next is Ron Wallace. How you doing, Alex? Good morning. Uh, I just wanted, I just wanted to ask you, how are you being a leader on the team? How are you able to get the guys to let you know, let them know that we still have unfinished business, you know, and we're high off the Rose Bowl, <clears throat> and of course you have a teammate that won the Heisman. How are you as a leader and what do you tell your guys? Hey, look, we still got business to take care of. I mean, exactly what you just said. Just tell them directly. I mean, we still got a lot of business to take care of. And I mean, I'm a senior and I've played a lot of football here um, over the past four years. And um, they respect what I say because they're going to take it like as is for face value. So um, this whole week, um, I've just been uh, telling guys to just seize every opportunity this week to get better. You know what I mean? Like sacrifice and invest all your time into this one game for one week. You know what I mean? Just buy into all the things we're doing, trust the process, and, and we're going to get the result we want. Next, we'll hear from Michael Casagrande. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Devontae is such a, he's kind of humble guy. He doesn't bring much attention to himself. He's very humble when talking about the Heisman Trophy. Do you guys celebrate that with him? What's he like behind the scenes when he's not at the podium? Is you know is he excited about this whole thing that happened uh, last night? Yeah, of course he is. Uh, he's super excited about it. He's grateful. But one thing about Smitty, um, he's a great player, but he's an even better teammate in person. I mean, um, you can ask for a better friend, to be honest. Um, I've known him since before we even got here. And he's always been like just a great dude, you know what I mean? But um, of course, he's excited about uh, his Heisman or whatever, but I'm pretty sure his focus is still on this national championship. And our final question for Alex will come from Zachary Brazil. Zach? Um, Alex, what, what, what's the best, you know, what impresses you the most about Najee? I mean, he, he put up great numbers and yet he kind of goes under the radar. You know, with the years, you know, Devonta had and Mac. I mean, what what's what stood out to you the most about Najee? What impresses me most about Najee is by far his work ethic. I mean, we all see what he does on um, the field and on uh, game day and stuff like that. But what a lot of people don't see is the work he puts in behind the scenes. He's most definitely one of the hardest workers I've ever met, and uh, I'm. Glad to have him as a teammate because his work ethic, it like rubs off on people. You know what I mean? He um, he just attacks every day with a purpose and intent to be the best that he can be. And it's, it's, it's great to see. It's very inspiring, to be honest. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time today, Alex. Yes, sir. Look forward to seeing you in Miami. First up will be John Zenor. John? Uh, morning, Miller. Um, 
Could you talk a bit about a guy on the other side of the ball on your team, Dylan Moses? Uh, you see him, you've seen him in practice for for years. What's he do well? What stands out about him? His leadership and his play on the field. I think. Um, well, good morning, and uh, I think Dylan's a, a great guy to have on your team. Um, besides the fact that he's an outstanding player, an outstanding athlete, um, he does everything right on and off the field. And I couldn't be more thankful to have a guy like that on my team and to be able to play with him. Um, it's been it's been fun playing with him the last three years. And I'm super thankful to experience Sue against such a good player in practice every day. Next is Patrick Murphy. Pat? Miller, looking at Ohio State's defense and how they've matched up with tight ends this year, it's, it's been some safeties, some corners, sometimes a linebacker. What have you seen from those matchups in, in previous games that, that you can take into this one? I think when you turn on the film, the first thing that strikes you is that, man, they're a really good football team. They are disciplined. Uh, they do what they're supposed to do. Not only that, they're, they're super athletic as well. So um, they, they pose a really good matchup uh, problem for us to look at and to kind of go across the board and make sure we have a really good game plan going into this game. Next will be Jeff Spiegel. Jeff? Hi, Miller. You'll have a lot of good football stories to tell your kids and grandkids. When you tell them you played with a Heisman Trophy winner, how will you describe Devontae Smith to them? Um, I think I'll describe Devontae Smith as a, as a fighter, um, but, but in the ultimate sense. Um, a guy that, that continued to put his head down and go to work no matter what. A guy that was continually about his team, a great teammate. That's how I described him to my high school coach the other day. He asked me about Devontae Smith. Uh, he wanted to know, you know what, there's the same high school coach as Trevor Lawrence. He goes, man, I want to root for Trevor, but tell me about this Devontae Smith guy. And I said, he is a great teammate. And um, that's something that sticks out to me, not only as a guy who's so incredibly talented and a great player, but also a great teammate. Next, we'll hear from Tony Sukalis. Tony? Yeah, Miller, more about, uh, about Dylan. He posted earlier this uh, last week that you know, he was going through a tough time this season. How do you help out a teammate uh, when he's going through a time like that? What are some of the steps you guys do to kind of bring your teammates up? Man, Dylan, Dylan's a guy who I can relate to a lot in that sense. Um, I had an ACL just like he did. And, and everyone you think comes back and you hear all this, well, you're going to come back bigger, faster, stronger immediately. And you just don't all the time. Um, I struggled coming back from my ACL a little bit. It took me a while. Honestly, it took me two good years to feel like myself again. And Dylan and I have talked on and off a lot about just uh, enc encouragement, man. You know, sometimes you don't always feel like you used to, but you can still play better. And you can still be better than the player you were. Um, so we, we talk a lot about that, actually, uh, as a guy who I've had an ACL, and I think I'm old here. So I try and impart the little wisdom I have to these guys who have been here uh, not quite as long as I have. Michael Casagrande. Michael? Yeah, Miller, you've been around here for a while, and there's a lot of talk about legacies of teams and uh, teams that have uh, – 2018 was one of the best teams that – they came around here, didn't win a championship, so it kind of loses some of that legacy. How how much is that? You know, are you thinking about that with this team, and, and what you hope this legacy of this team will be? Um, I mean, honestly, I haven't quite thought of the legacy of the team. I know Coach just mentioned a little bit how we have the opportunity to do something special uh, that no one's ever done before. Um, but honestly, I think everybody's just kind of focused on Ohio State, as as cliche as that sounds. I don't think anybody's looking forward to oh, what a legacy we could have. Uh, we just want to kind of do what we can do today, not necessarily what we could do down the road. Um, well, Charlie Potter, Charlie. Yeah, hey, Miller, I uh, just want to ask you about Sark. Just how happy are you guys for him to, to get the job at Texas, but also the fact that he's able to stick around and, and finish the season out with you guys? Well, it's awesome. Um, we're, 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 we're excited for this game, and we're focused on this game. We're glad he's going to be here and, uh, and be a part of that with us. Like I said, I mean, we're super excited for him, and that's a great opportunity. But I know he is, and so are we, both focused on Ohio State and, uh, and what's to come and, and what is a Tuesday practice today. So uh, that's first and foremost, but we're, we're super excited for him. Brian Davis? Yeah, Miller, kind of, kind of along those lines, you know, Schools from all over the country try to poach Alabama assistants and analysts and whoever to build their own staffs. 
what is it about y'all's internal formula or magic or recipe, whatever word you want to use, that other people so badly want to steal and recreate? I think it's the fact that we win, um, first and foremost, but it's the, the system and the process that, that coaches instilled in not only as players, but every coach that comes here. Um, there's a reason you get coaches from all walks of life, young coaches, old coaches, coaches on the back end of the career, their front end, um, they want to come here and learn under Coach Saban, and, and people want that. Uh, people want Heisman Trophy winners and, and championship games and just to play really good football day in and day out. And um, I think people are trying to get a taste of that from Coach Saban, honestly. Next, we'll hear from Nathan Baird. Nathan? Miller, just as a, a fellow athlete, uh, what is the thing that impresses you the most about Najee Harris? I mean, Najee's one of the hardest workers we have on the team. I don't think people appreciate that guy does a lot of work. <laughs> and especially outside of our time here, he does a lot of work. But I think physically, his balance and, and flexibility are the two things that impress me the most. Um, just the balance to stay on after hit, to hurdle someone and continue to keep running. <laughs> Um, that physically is what's most astounding, I think, about his game. Tim May, Tim, you're up. Yeah, I was just wondering, Miller, uh, if you had to describe, uh, nobody probably knows Nick Saban better than you do from a player standpoint, as long as you've been there. What What is his magic? What is his secret? What is the uh, potion he he spreads around you guys? Um, like I said, we've everybody hears about the process, and I think, in, in really simple terms, it's it's kind of the ability to be excellent uh, in everything you do one day at a time. Not necessarily trying to look ahead, but be excellent in what he's going to do today uh, in the task at hand. Um, and and he does that better than anyone to to be excellent every day at the task at hand. And no one does it better consistently. Tony Gardeman, Tony. I wanted to ask you about Ohio State's linebackers. They play four of them quite a bit, and any three of those guys could be matched up with you. What kind of problems or issues do they present for you as a tight end? Uh, anytime you play, you're playing in the, the national championship game, you know you're playing really good players, and this is no exception. Um, they're old. They're veteran players who know exactly what they're doing. And then add on top of that, like I said earlier, they're really good athletes. Um, they can strike and get off blocks really well, and they kind of run the show back there for, for the defense. And so... We kind of know what we're up against, really good players, veteran players, and we have to practice and prepare really, really well to uh, be successful. And that's kind of the mindset right now is practice and prepare the right way. So hopefully we can uh, play how we want to. Next to be Joseph Goodman. Joseph? Hey, Mark. Um, thanks for taking the time. What are you going to take away from Nick Saban's leadership to apply to the rest of your life? That's a lot. That's a big question. <laughs> um, I've been here for five years. So I've heard a lot of things that, that I'll pocket for the rest of my life. But like I said earlier, it's just the way he goes about uh, his life. And he does just attack all the little things with the same ferocity and intensity that he attacks the big things. Um, whether it's how he's scripted goal line or how he's coaching the national championship game, it's done the same way. Um, I really do believe that. He... He is better at the little things than anybody else. Thus, he's better at the big things. Um, that's, it's simple, but really, really hard to do. Lucas Weiss. Lucas? Hey, Miller, thanks for taking the time. What's John Mechie like as a teammate, and how has he grown over his time with the program? And Mechie was a guy not a lot of people knew about until we played the spring game, and he has like eight catches and like 140 yards. And everybody's like, this John Mechie guy's got to be pretty solid. Um, and it's been fun to see him kind of to grow and develop and, and mature a little bit. Um, you've got this loaded receiver room year in and year out. Um, and so some names get glossed over. But, but Mechie's a guy this year who's man, put his head down and gone to work uh, all summer. It's not like we had the weight room open or anything, but I'd, I'd see him at a field here or there and um, just, just working his butt off. Um, trying to, to find a place in this offense. And I really think he has. Um, by the way he works and puts his head down, he's fun and energetic to be around. 
Um, a guy with a lot of energy and a smile on his face. So he's, he's fun to have on the offense. And our final question for Miller comes from Steve Mouton. Steve? Miller, uh, congratulations on getting to the championship game here. Uh, if I can't ask you an old man question. Um, so you, you mentioned about Coach Saban and what, what kind of influence he's had on you. I've, he I've heard from former players and current players on how much Nick Saban jokes on the field and the practice field. So I'm wondering through five years, maybe the cleanest joke you can tell us over the uh, right, right here on the press conference or how much of, of the jokes is kind of, does coach need to get some fresh material on his uh, banter there in the practice field? <laughs> I, um, he definitely needs some new material. I was talking to, to Ronnie Brown the other day, uh, another Cartersville alum, and, and he mentioned a joke Coach Saban said to him when he was in Miami, and I was like, he used that the other day. <laughs> um, and it's been a while since he was in Miami. But uh, Coach is a lot more lively and a lot more jovial than I think people just assume, the way he carries himself, especially on screen. Um, and he's a lot more fun to be around than, than, than people take him as. People take that we have no fun, that he's no fun. Um, but he, is, he thinks he's funnier than he is, but he, he's pretty funny. Um, and I don't know if I have a joke to share. Josh Maxson is laughing at me in the back, but uh, that doesn't make it not true. Thank you very much, Miller. We appreciate the time. Look forward to seeing you in Miami. Uh, thanks, guys. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, we've got a number of media lined up here, so we'll just jump right into the Q&A. First up will be Bill Rabinowitz. Bill? Okay. Hi, Mac. Uh, I just, can you kind of describe the challenge that Ohio State's defense will pose you, especially the, the front four, the defensive line? Yeah, I mean, overall, they have great players. Um, not a super complicated scheme. And they don't have to be that way because they have great players. But it's mostly four down fronts. You know, I've been impressed watching them on film. Very vertical team in terms of the D-line, getting back there at the quarterback. And then, obviously, all 11 players rallying to the ball. Um, you know, they do a good job. And we got to be ready to roll. And it's going to be the best defense we've played uh, this year. Next up, we'll hear from Charlie Potter. Charlie? Hey, Mac, uh, I asked Alex the same question. You guys have a bunch of Florida natives on your roster. Just how special is it to be able to end this season, one that's kind of been unprecedented with all its disruptions and everything in your home state of Florida? Yeah, it is really cool. Um, you know, just being from Florida and getting a chance to go back there and then playing in Miami is a great, a great city. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just another game, and we got to go out there and, and play our game. And Ohio State's going to do the same. They're going to play the game just like it's any other game. And uh, we're just looking forward to that. Next is Patrick Murphy. Patrick? Mac, you guys have played a lot of great secondaries this year. When you look at Ohio State's on film, what challenges do the Buckeyes defensive backs present that you guys will have to overcome in this one? Yeah, I think the four guys that play back there are talented football players. Um, you know, I played uh, seven on seven with Sean Wade, 24, a uh, great guy, great family, really a technician, uh, a longer guy, and uh, he plays well in coverage. And then Seven Banks on the other side, for Soya is a cool name, um, and he's a great football player, speed, change of directions, all there. And then their two safeties, um, 21 and 41, do a great job in the back end, um, run fitting, playing coverage, you know, post high defense, they're, they're ball hawks. So you got to keep your eyes on them. Um, but they play with speed and they play together back there. And like I said, the whole defense, really good defense. And, you know, it starts up front, but they play well all around. Next player from Michael Casagrande. Michael? Yeah, Mac, just wondering, how do you hope this team will be remembered? Um. I think we've been remembered for a lot already, but you know, to do what we've uh, done this season has been impressive. And we got one more game, uh, and it's the most important game. But we're not satisfied with where we are. And people are going to put a lot of pressure on this game. But I'm super proud of our teammates and coaches and the fans for supporting us all season long. And uh, there's no added pressure. But at the same time, 
it's kind of what we signed up for in coming to Alabama is just to get a chance to play in a national championship and then uh, hopefully win one. Next will be Dan Hope. Dan? Hey, Mac. Just wonder what's it like for you to, you know, go head to head with Justin Fields in this game and kind of how do you enjoy that as a quarterback? Yeah, I love I love playing against a great quarterback. Um, Justin Fields is a top quarterback in the country and he's played well, you know, this entire year and throughout his whole career. Um, and I'm just blessed to be able to play on a field with him. Um, and, you know, our defense has a great challenge with their offense. But, you know, he's a great player and I'm looking forward to you know, talking with him and, and watching him play. Next is Brian Davis. Brian? I think you might be muted. There you are. You got me? Yeah, now I got you. Yeah. Hey, I just, uh, Mac, I just wanted to ask you, how would you describe your relationship with Sark and um, how that's gone this season? And what would be your advice to uh, future quarterbacks uh, who are going to work with him? Um, yeah, Coach Sark has done a great job game planning all year long. Uh, he calls great plays. All of the players really like him, and, and we just appreciate all the hard work he's put into this program. Um, you know, he's calling cool plays, but at the same time, we, we stick to our base rules and, and just follow what he wants us to do. Um, and future quarterbacks, I just say, you know, enjoy Coach Sark. He's, he's a great guy. You can learn a lot about being a great person and then also applying things to your game. And, you know, he's coached at all levels, NFL, college. So you can get a lot of different information um, from what he teaches you when you watch film and then just learn how to think like Coach Sark because he sees everything that the defense does and he's going to put you in the best position to succeed as a quarterback in an offense. Next will be David Wilson. David? Mac, uh, you mentioned playing seven on seven with Sean. Uh, just kind of curious if you have any kind of standout memories of, of playing with him or maybe practicing against him um, any, or something you made that, that kind of stands out when you think back to that. Um, I don't know if I can remember a specific moment, but uh, Sean, like I said, he comes from a great family and he's a technician and, um, you know, he's kind of a perfectionist in his own way. Um, you know, he celebrates when he makes great plays, but he's more of a quiet guy um, and just kind of does his job. But in high school, you know, really humble for being a top recruit. Um, and, you know, at the time I wasn't very highly recruited and, you know, he was always had my back in interviews or anything like that. So. Uh, I really appreciate him and his family, um, and I'm just really happy for how he's played throughout his career at Ohio State. Next will be Steve Hummer. Steve? Oh, uh, yeah, Mac, an uh, awful lot of good players have, have come through Alabama through the years. What, what do you think this group of, uh, on offense, uh, how, how are they uh, unique and special in your eyes? Um, I don't know. I think it's cool that we've, we've all got a chance to kind of play with each other for the past couple of years. Um, and everyone's kind of had their own role and their roles have changed throughout the years. Um, there's plenty of examples of that, but I think it just shows to the stick to itness of our offense and, and our whole team and the defense. There's plenty of players that, that are the same way. Um, but I really love this team and I've got a chance to play on four really great teams at Alabama, but I think this one's really special. Um, and I think it starts with the players and, and how we just came in together and, and fought for a common goal of trying to get a chance to play in the national championship game, which is, is right where we are. Next to be Jacoby Cole. Jacoby? Hey, man, what does this team mean to you? What'd you say? Sorry. What does this team mean to you? The team? Yeah, um, yes. the, the team, this team uh, in general, just I'm really happy for these guys fighting through adversity. Um, like I said before, uh, we got a great group of guys, but at the same time, we have a lot of great support staff around here in this building that help everything go, and they probably don't get enough credit that they deserve. Um, but, you know, this team is, is awesome, and we're just looking forward to finishing this year strong and getting a chance to play the final game of the year together for 60 minutes. Thank you. No problem. Next will be Stephen Smith. Stephen? Hey, Mac, I know you were really proud of watching Devontae, you know, win the Heisman. 
but where, when did that chemistry between you and Devontae start? And talk about that chemistry that you two have. Yeah, first of all, you know, I just want to congratulate Smitty for, for his award. Um, you know, that's really awesome, and I'm proud for his family in Amy City. Uh, that was really cool to see him on the broadcast. Um, and his whole family and the whole city was really in there cheering Devontae on. But uh, we, we've had that chemistry for a while. Um, I think about camps and things like that. And um, me and uh, Smitty were the two skinniest guys out there throwing the ball to each other. So <laughs> he kind of just started there. Um, but he's worked really hard, and he deserves everything that's came his way. Uh, Charlie Potter. Yeah, Mac, I know his availability is still kind of up in the air, but just how good was it to see Jalen Waddle back on the practice field? Yeah, he uh, he actually looked really good, but, you know, I don't really know like if I can answer that question properly because you got to ask Coach Saban and the training staff. But, you know, he's, he's worked really hard in his rehab, and uh, we'll see what happens. Next, we'll hear from Steve Mouton. Steve? Mac, uh, congratulations on, on being a Heisman finalist last night. And I, I, tell me about uh, that that moment in particular when Smitty's name was called and uh, being the first guy to hug him and what that moment was like for you. Yeah, it was really cool. You know, I, I was telling some people earlier, I was nervous about getting Smitty the ball this year. I was like, I got to make sure I can make sure that Smitty gets the ball and makes plays. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure I did my job and, and his success. And obviously, he's helped me out a ton, and everyone else has too. But you know, just to see Smitty's his entire life kind of just go into that moment, you could see it. Um, he was kind of like a little shocked. But I was so happy for him. Like It's like a video game, man. You're up there, and you, you get to see your teammate win the Heisman Trophy. Um, and you feel like that's just one of the coolest things that you could do is, is have a chance to be with them, especially in kind of the crazy year that it's been. Um, and just be able to be the first guy to kind of congratulate him. I'm just so happy for Smitty and his family and his city and the whole, the whole, the whole nine. Next will be Tim May. Tim. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, Mac, I'll go all the way back watching Alabama football back when Joe Namath played. And, uh, uh, and I keep telling everybody, this is the most prolific wide open offense I've ever seen from Alabama. And uh, obviously, they put their trust in you to run this show. Uh, but what is it like when you know you've got the confidence of a Nick Saban and Steve Sarkeesian to just call almost any play at any time and, and with those kind of weapons around you? Yeah, it's, it's really just an awesome experience to be able to lead these guys. And I've said this before, but they, they make everything go. I mean, like you said, we have a great play caller, and then we have a great offensive line and skill players that make it all happen. So. Um, really, we prepare really hard. It doesn't just show up, show up on game day. Um, it takes a lot of really months and years of preparation, um, and we've just kind of molded together as a group. But at the same time, I've said this before, we had some improvements to make after last game, and uh, we're going to do that this week, and we've started that already, and just looking forward to this next game. Tony? Can you hear me? No, I can. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Mac. I, I know you, you can't really comment on Jalen Waddle, but how exciting would it be? The possibility? Have you thought about the possibility of reinserting him into this offense now that everything's still even clicking without him? Yeah, it'd be really cool. Um, you know, Jalen's worked really hard uh, to to get back on the field, and I know he wants nothing more to play. But I think they're just going to make that decision, you know, downstairs. But um, it's it's his choice and. I feel like, you know, in watching him, he looks really good out there. So we'll see what happens. Great. Thank you very much, Mac. We appreciate the time today, and we'll see you in Miami. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Well, John, thanks for joining us. We have media lined up here, so we'll just jump right into the question and answer. Can you turn it off? First up will be Dan Ralph. There we go. Hey, John, uh, congratulations on getting to this point. I'm wondering how difficult is it waiting and not knowing whether you're going to play Monday or whether it's going to be another week given the COVID situation? 
Um, I wouldn't say it's too difficult. I think we just focus on what we have to do to prepare for the game. And whenever that is, and whenever, whatever date it is, um, I know that we'll be ready and well prepared to play. Next will be Lucas Weiss. Lucas? Hey, John, thanks so much for taking the time. Can you maybe walk us through that 40-yard that reception in the Rose Bowl and, and uh, Devontae Smith's blocking on that play as well? I think it was just a good call and great execution. Um, I think we got the call into the right look that we wanted. And of course, um, what we take pride on as receivers is also playing without the ball. And I think that was great of Smitty leading me down the field, um, leading the way. Next will be Dave Naylor. Dave? John, can, can you tell us a little bit about you know, the relationship you have with your brothers, some of your friends back in Brampton that I understand, you know, you still keep very close ties with through the course of the season and, and what those kind of relationships mean, you know, supporting you in, in your football journey. Uh, the relationships I have with my brothers and um, all my close friends back in Brampton and back home mean everything to me. Um, they are the reason why I am the way I am. Um, they've helped me with everything and they continue to be there for me um, unconditionally. So. Those relationships definitely mean a lot to me. Next to be Zachary Brazil. Zach? John, a uh, few kind of, I guess, a two parter. Um, how has uh, how has Jalen looked in practice, and what would getting him back for this game mean to you guys? Um, Waddles look good. Um, he's been doing a lot of treatment, he's been on top of everything, and I feel like um, that's that and him coming back as to him coming back I think everyone knows what he brings and what um, what that brings when he's on the field to the defense how they look at that um, how dynamic our offense is um, so I feel like um, everyone kind of knows what he brings to the table Patrick Murphy Pat? I'm not sure how much you look at, at individual matchups uh, before, but there's a, there's a chance seven banks, number seven for Ohio State, could be on you a lot. If you've studied tape on him, what do you see from him? He's a young receiver who's who's in his first year starting for Ohio State. Um, I don't really look at individual individual matchups a lot, but I do look at their defenses and their personnel and who we're going to play. But he's definitely a good um, DB. Um, their DBs are really long, lengthy, good in coverage. Um, so I think um, just on, on my part, being prepared, being prepared to face whoever and win my box. Uh, Michael Casagrande. Michael? Yeah, just wonder where were you watching the Heisman stuff last night and what was your reaction when you saw uh, Devontae today? Um, I was watching it at, at my place um, the other night. Um, and I wasn't surprised. I had said it long ago that Smitty is the best player in college football this year. Um, so definitely seeing him win um, was great. Um, extremely proud of him. But um, I definitely wasn't surprised because I knew I knew he was going to win it from from time. Next will be Jeff Spiegel. Jeff. Hey, John, is it, is it cool to see a wide receiver finally win the Heisman Trophy? And do you think we'll see more wideouts win it in the future? Um, I hope I hope more wideouts win in the future. But it definitely is cool, especially it being um, somebody from Alabama and somebody in our, in our receiver room. But um, especially it being more of a quarterback, running back award that people say. But it definitely is cool. And I definitely hope that more wide receivers um, win the Heisman Trophy coming up. Nathan Baird. Nathan? Hey, John. But what's something about Mac Jones that you feel maybe doesn't get enough appreciation from the rest of us? Um, I'm not really sure. I think uh, Mac does everything well, and I think he does everything great, actually, um, as far as being a leader. Um, his ability, what he does on the field, his preparation for the games. So um, I think he's great at all those things. 
Ronald Wallace. Ron. Uh, good morning, John. I, w I would like to know how how are you able you and the other receivers able to be on the exact same page as Matt, and and how did he make the determination who's going to get the ball? Uh, just practice. I think uh, just we practice really hard. Um, we always practice hard. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the chemistry is built, a lot of the bonds are built. And as far as um, determining who gets the ball, um, we kind of just go out there and play, and the ball finds the right person. Um, like we say, the ball will always find the right person. Um, so I think that that's pretty much it. Kurt Burmester, Kurt? Uh, just wondering if you could tell us, uh, John, on uh, just how much of a different player are you now than you were uh, before you came to Bama? Um, I'm different in, in a lot of ways, uh, physically, mentally, um, emotionally. You just grow coming to Alabama, just knowing that every day you're going to compete and that this place is going to bring the best out of you. It's going to force. It's going to force the best out of you. Um, for you to be the best version of yourself, for you to be a competitor. Um, and I think in all those ways, I've definitely grown. Next will be Tony Gerdeman. Tony? Tony you said Devontae is the best player in college football. Can one defender slow him down and... Was there a second part to that question? I didn't yeah. hear it. Can a defender, can one defender, can one guy slow down Devontae? Um, no. No. And our last question will come from Lucas Weiss. Lucas? John, you elaborated last week before the Rose Bowl about the journey you've been on different countries around the world. What have you learned? What did you learn about yourself along that journey, living in different countries that's helped prepare you as a football player and a person? Um, I think that has taught me to be um, comfortable being uncomfortable um, just because I've never really been in one place for extreme, an extremely long amount of time. I, and I'm kind of always like have been moving around. So it's always a new environment which can be uncomfortable for a lot of people, but it kind of just taught me to be comfortable being uncomfortable, and that helps a lot um, in the sport um, and in life. Thank you very much, John. We appreciate your time. We look forward to seeing you in Miami. Thank you. Najee, we've seen you uh, hurdle defenders going back to your Antioch days. Uh, what do you recall about your first hurdle at Antioch and what, what kind of sparked the habit? What, what got you doing that? Uh, why do you uh, enjoy that? Oh, this is Ron from uh, San Francisco. Is that Ron from San Francisco Chronicles? Can you hear me, Ron? Yes, sir, it is me. What's up? You ain't gonna say nothing with that? What's up with it? Dang, Ron, don't, 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 don't act fake now, Ron. But um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's cool. I mean, I don't really remember the first hurdle really. Um, but I mean, it was just a way. So I got tired of getting chopped in the legs, man, and the and the ankles. It hurts. So I mean, I guess I just start hurdling. I don't really remember the first hurdle though. Thank you. Our next, our next question comes from Pat Ford. Pat. Uh, Najee, now that you're almost a year removed from the decision you and several of your classmates made to come back to school, what's the feeling like to being this close to having everything work as you all had hoped? Um, I, I guess you could say it worked out. Um, the decision was, uh, of course, of us coming back. Um, we all came back. We made a decision. And um, really, in the beginning, I, get, I think we all agreed on that. Like, you know, if we come back, we can't come back. Like and walk through things and like think that like since we're like you know coming back and um going to be seniors that it can come easy to us so we all i think bought into like if we're coming back we got to come back 100 percent and um and uh and and be a uh i guess show people the example of how we should practice and how we should play for the for the young guys coming in and um i think that it worked out so far 
Next letter from Dennis Dodd. Dennis? Najee, there was a time when, when guys like you from California and the East Bay would, would stay in that region, Pac-12, whatnot. Why, why are guys like you and, and Aaron and Isaiah, um, you know, going, going east, uh, leaving, leaving the area? Yeah. Um, I think, well, I, I, don't, I don't know for, for them uh, why they did it. But for me personally, um, I feel like, you know, uh, they say a lot of West Coast guys can't play. And, um, and uh, I guess conferences like this, the SEC. So I wanted to, like, see, like, kill that, that hype, I guess, in a way, and show that, like, you know, we, we can play. Uh, West Coast people can play. Um, we have a lot more uh, guys from the West Coast playing in the SEC than before. So um, it's good to see a lot of guys travel across. Um, but I think it's good for, for people to stay home. I think it's good for people to go to other states to get, a, I guess, a better, better experience, a better environment, a different environment, you can say, um, of, of, of culture around here. Um, I've been here in Alabama for four years. I learned a lot of new things. I, the weather, one of them, um, being a West Coast guy, you know, used to sunshine. Um, over here, it's, it's humid. And um, at first, I didn't like it, but when you get, when you, when you hear long enough, you, you find out that it's like the best place to train um, for upcoming sports, to train in this humidity. That's how I take it. Um, and just seeing a, a new culture, uh, a new environment, like I said, and you know, showing people that West Coast guys can play in um, conferences like this. Next, we'll hear from Dan Hope. Dan? Hey, Najee. Ohio State's run defense has been one of the best in the country this year. Just what do you see when you watch them on film? They got a good defensive line, a really good defensive line. Um, <clears throat> the front four, let me see, 11, yeah, the front four um, is all, all really good. And, of course, Barron up there at the linebacker position and the other guys, um, all of them are good. Um, you know, all of them, all them plays a role. All of them are really fast off the ball, too. Uh, they're really good in dissecting things out, really good not coming down and, and, and uh, playing the run and dropping back into coverage when they have to. They're really good lateral movement, stuff like that. They're really good at chasing the ball and uh, really rallying around the ball. Um, they do, they're, they're really well coached, though, on, a, on the defensive side. Um, their secondary is good, DBs, all the guys can play. So uh, it should be a good game. <clears throat> Next will be Bill Rabinowitz. Bill? Yes, that was actually my question. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming you guys have the mentality that no matter how good the run defense is you face, you can run the ball. Can you just kind of describe what that mentality is? Oh, can you ask the question one more time? Can you ask a, can you ask a question? Bill? One? Bill, can you ask that? Yes, can you hear me now? Yeah. OK. As much respect as you have for Ohio State's run defense, I'm assuming that you guys feel like you can run on anybody. What gives you that confidence? And you got to describe just how well your offensive line is playing. Yeah, um, I think our offensive line is, is playing really well. Um, really, the, the, we have a game plan to set from our, our coaches, and we follow that game plan. Um, I, I feel like, you know, we have weapons everywhere. So, um, you know, I guess you can say that we, we can run the ball, but like, I mean, that's not really what our focus is. Our focus is what is what we is really balanced, I guess you can say. So, um, I mean, they have a really good run defense, so it's not going to be it's not going to be easy. They have really good pass defense, so it's not going to be easy. Um, so we just try to balance it up, balance it as much as we can, and um, try to look for weaknesses. Michael Casagrande. Hey, Najee, I uh, just wondering, what do you hope the legacy of this team will be? You said the legacy? Yeah, how do you, how do you hope this team's remembered? You know, a team that's, that doesn't quit, a team that doesn't give up, um, a team that, that shows that um, real integrity, um, a team that can fight, and a team that, like, you know, that, that plays as, as one. Um, you know, obviously, we hope that we can, we can win it all and go undefeated. But um, we worry about the small thing. We worry about the small things first, and then work up to to the main event, and that's playing Monday. Um, right now, we just right now we're just worrying about practicing, getting up, getting to the game on Monday, and then um, from there we can just 
like I said, we hope to be victorious and, and be another undefeated team. But like I said, we just worry about the small things first to build up to Monday. And then hopefully it's Monday's outcome will be victorious. <clears throat> Next will be Ben Hall. Ben? Ben, you need to unmute your line. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, hey, Najee, uh, you've played on numerous college football playoff teams at Alabama in the past. What would you say is different about this year's team than previous years? Yeah, um, like you said, I, I have played on a lot of uh, playoff and championship teams. Um, I think what separates this team really is uh, really all the distractions that we had outside the program, of course, um, with the coronavirus and and um, social injustice that happening and the uh, not having, not being able to play or not. And we all just come to, came together and really and um, grinded it out throughout the, throughout the summer, throughout the year, not knowing if we'll play or not, having a game postponed, having a game canceled. Um, you look out in the football world, some conference not be able to play. Um, you wonder if like really if, 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 if we're going to be like that. So really the, uh, just really uh, us bonding together more and more as a team and, and knowing that uh, that every game we're going to get the best of everybody, and uh, that we have to just really play to our standard, the Alabama standard. And um, I, I learned personally of um, when I was a freshman and I was on the on the team, I wanted to play a lot. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to play a lot, and uh, I didn't really have the opportunity to to play until I guess you could say the national championship, really. Um, but you know, me being here now, I got the young guys behind me. So, uh, you know, sometimes I, I, I kind of get out the game early so I can let the, them guys play so they can get experience, so they can get more reps, so they can get game reps. So when they get in the game, God forbid that I get hurt or something like that, they can be able to – it won't be no drop-off or anything like that. Um, and those guys being Jace, Rodell, obviously, um, Trey, Keelan, all them boys. Uh, you know, for them to, to get as much game reps as possible, get enough game experiences, um, really that helps out. So I, I think you can say that that's bonding together a lot and knowing that, you know, um, that we need each other. Thank you. Of course. Next to be Patrick Murphy. Pat? Najee, you talked about the, the talented rush defense Ohio State has. When you have an opportunity to go against a group that you know is going to challenge you, does the excitement level increase a little bit, you guys, the offense as a whole? Yeah. Um, for me, 100% increases, 100%. The best thing that can happen or the best thing you can do to get me excited is say, like, look, at this is going to be the best whatever that we play against, the best run defense, the best passes, and deep, best pass defense, the best talent. That always excite me. I guess that's one thing that really excite me in the game of football. Really, is this having to know that across the ball is good competition, great competition. People that's going to be in the next level, um, people who are won all these awards and stuff like that. And for me to have opportunity to play against these people, that's nothing more exciting to me. Really, um, I love that. I love competition and I love stuff like that. So for me personally, yes, that gets me excited because I know that you know. It ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be no big runs like that. It ain't going to be like, you know, I guess you could say the hurdles and stuff like that or like any, any, any like uh, explosive plays. It's going to be, you know, their best against our best. And then, you know, I got to make the most of it. And that's what I like. Next up will be Bruce Feldman. Bruce? Sorry. This past offseason, Alabama had a big change in philosophy and the strength and conditioning program, and obviously uh, some staff changes there. How did you think that change happened for you as a student athlete in terms of what they did, in terms of how you train, but also how have you seen it help you on the field this year? Yeah. Um, so obviously the um, Coach Cock left us to go to Georgia. Um, he, had, he, you know, the um, it was his time, I guess. Here was up. Shout out to Coach Cock. He was a great mentor for me for the for the years that he'd been here uh, mentoring me. But uh, we we got in Dr. Ray and Dr. Baloo, uh, and um, we got in Ray, Dr. Ray and uh, Coach Baloo, 
Um, and they came in here and they, uh, they, they brought in different things that they had with, with the program that was out. Like you said, the velocity things, measuring how explosive you are, um, different type of workouts to, to complement the athlete that needs to get worked on that specific thing. Um, for me, it was a lot of uh, speed and uh, explosiveness agility, you can say. I work with Dr. Ray a lot on that, um, still to this day. Um, he helped me out a lot, though. Um, still, like I said, still to this day, um, he, he, he has a workout specifically for that athlete. And that's what you need, because not athletes are the same. So you need a program that, um, that will help that athlete and what he needs to improve on. And that's what they do a good job of finding out. They know all their players, so they know that, OK, this, this person needs that, this person needs that. Um, so that helped out all of us, really, this whole, um, this whole off season. And you know, us having a short off season, there was no spring practice, right? There's no spring practice. Hey, Josh, there's no spring practice, right? Obviously, right? Am I tripping? There was no spring practice. Yeah. So us being those spring practices, um, we didn't really get to see their whole program, but the little stuff they had, it helped out us a lot. So I'm excited for what they have next year for other guys to see uh, what else they have to provide to, to better the athlete. Thank you very much, Najee. We appreciate your time today, and we look forward to seeing you in Miami. Appreciate it.